Hi everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to Largs, west of Glasgow. Today I'm going to be catching that ferry there over to that island there, which is Great Cumbria. The reason why I'm taking you there, I'll tell you when we get over there. First things first, I need to catch that ferry. Welcome to Great Cumbria Island, probably one of Scotland's most easily accessible islands. You've got Largs in the mainland over there, and there's a ferry every 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It only takes 5 minutes to get here. It's a great little day out. Why am I here? Well, this is part of my summertime get fit regime. I have cycled around Great Cumbria many times and I've always gone anti-clockwise, but I've never walked it. So today I'm going to walk it and I'm going to take you guys along with me as well. It should take about two, two and a half hours. It's about 10 miles, 16 kilometers, and like I said, it's part of my get fit regime because this is the easy one. The next walk I'll be doing in the next couple of weeks is a more moderate challenge, and after that, it's the doozy. I'm leaving that until late August. Anyway, let's get going. We've got, like I said, 10 miles, 16 kilometers to walk. Very nice island to walk around. Not a lot of traffic. Let's get going. There are actually more cyclists on the road than cars, which is a good thing. It makes the walk nice and safe. There is also a bus service from the, the ferry slip down to Millport, which is, I was going to say the biggest town, but I think it's the only town on the island. But we don't need a bus, we're walking. So far the only disadvantage of walking around Great Cumbria, and I mean the only disadvantage, and it's just a little one, is the fact that there are no pavements, and as a result you have to walk on the road, which means that you have to remember what you were told when you were at school, and that is face oncoming traffic, which I'm doing right now with these cyclists. Hey. Nice people here in Great Cumbria. I've been checking the weather report for about a week before doing this walk and every day was threatening showers and I thought let's just bite the bullet if we get showers then it's going to be refreshing I tell you today is warm a lot warmer than I thought it was going to be in fact I thought wearing this t-shirt wasn't going to be enough it's a beautiful day here on Great Cumbria lovely views as well. I mean the water is the sort of water I'd love to have kayaked on. Years ago I had a kayak. This is years before YouTube and uh, I explored bits of this coast and I thought these are the sort of days you waited and waited for and if you're lucky you got one or two each summer where it wasn't blowing a gale and the sun was shining. Hello! Hello. Hiya. Hi. This is a sort of perfect day here on the west coast of Scotland. Typical summer's day. Landmark, the lion.
With a little imagination, perhaps it's a lion, perhaps it's something else, who knows. Right, we are approaching Millport. I just think I saw the first of the houses just ahead. Scottish National Antarctic Expedition 1902-1904. We're no quarter of the way around Great Cumbria Island and we're now entering Millport. This is one of these traditional Victorian seaside towns which has never really lost its charm. It's still a beautiful little town. Not much happens here, but that's why you come here, to enjoy the silence. Right, we're not going to stop in Millport because uh, I still have three quarters of the way to go around the island. I will point out, however, we are now entering the windy side of the island, so I will apologise in advance. Have you been to those countries or is it just a I've collection? Been to some of them. Some of them, okay. <laughs> Definitely the windier side of the island. I've gone off the main road just for a little detour to the most southerly point of Great Cumbria. I want to have a look at something and I'll tell you a little story. I haven't been here for about 15 years, so I was sort of doing a bit of Zen navigating there, but uh, we found the right place. I wanted to show you that there. That over there is Little Cumbria Island. Not to be confused with Great Cumbria Island, which is the one we're standing on now, because after all, there are two Cumbries. Little Cumbria Island. Um, it's a privately owned island, and I first discovered this island years and years ago, and I thought, I want to go there, because you can't get there. You either have to have your own boat, and you need permission to land, or you join one of the day trips organized by Clyde Charters. The Clyde Charters do a lot of these little strange one-day cruises around the Firth of Clyde. I did one last year to the sugar boat uh, wreck on the Firth of Clyde and I would strongly recommend if you've got nothing to do, you want to do something very different, check out the website. I'll put a link below. This is not a paid endorsement. It's an endorsement to a, a local company which I think do fantastic tours and I'm hoping to do one or two this year as well. But anyway, they do uh, cruises to Little Cumbria and that's about the only way you and I are going to get on that island. Right, let's keep walking. Okie dokie, heading back to the main road now. This second half of the walk will be the quietest of the two halves. Most of the road traffic is between Millport and the ferry slip up there. On the western shore, there's absolutely nothing to see apart from scenery, the occasional cyclist and mad walker like me. Here's a little geology lesson for you. See these cliffs behind me? These are a result of glacial isostatic adjustment. What that means is, during the last ice age, we had about half a mile of ice above us, and that squeezed the land into the Earth's crust. When the ice melted, it bounced back again, like you would if you pressed a sponge, it would bounce back up again, but a little bit slower. In actual fact, it's so slow, it's around about three millimeters per year, which, according to my calculation, in my lifetime, the west coast of Scotland has gone up about that much. There's an interesting factoid for you. Right, let's get moving. I'm getting some strange looks from cyclists. <laughs> I've just noticed that the road on the west side of the island has got a pavement. And this is the quietest part of the whole island. I wonder what the logic was, because most people are walking between the slip and Millport. Who knows? I just saw some seagulls.
I know quite a few subscribers follow me because of my hiking videos. If you haven't seen the channel before, please subscribe because there are other hiking videos coming in. They're in the pipeline and I wouldn't want you to miss out. Um, the next one is going to be medium hard and the one after that hard. So if you don't want to miss out on me struggling, make sure you subscribe. Hello. Okay. Just when I was getting used to walking on a pavement, it disappears. Oh well. Like I said, the road is really quite quiet here, apart from cyclists. Cyclists seem to outnumber cars like 20 to 1. Speaking of which, here comes some more. If you were to cover up your good eye and squint through your bad one, that could be anywhere. walking past these uh, blackberries back there and I nearly had heart failure. Two faces appeared from within the blackberries. I went, oh, hello. And he says, can you help us? We've actually taken the wrong turn. I said, how did you end up there in the first place? Oh, we're taking a shortcut and we actually got lost. So they wanted me to try and trample down some of the blackberries between the road and a stone wall a couple of feet in. They would tackle it from the other side and hopefully they'll be able to get out and get home tonight. What a bizarre thing to see. <laughs> Calmac ferries have an interesting ticketing system on this route between Largs and Great Cumbria Island. You buy a return ticket, but it's effectively for one way only. They take the ticket from you when you board the ferry at Largs. You just walk on board returning to the mainland because there is no other way of getting to the mainland. You have to use that ferry. So it just saves having to issue a second ticket for the return leg, doesn't it? We're nearly there. I can see the ferries. Well, we're just about at the slip now, so I think this will more or less wrap up this video. It's sort of place, Great Cumbria, where you can't really get lost unless you try hard. And then those two guys behind the blackberries managed to get lost, so I don't know. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for coming along on this. It's put a few miles in the old legs. Please subscribe again, like I said, because um, there are a couple of longer, more challenging walks ahead this summer. I'd like you to come along with me as well. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time. Oh.